All right, everyone, good. Afternoon, tier three. Bob McCall, we're going to talk about motivation today. I went for a few people, I hope some people come on. Um, yeah, a bit of motivation today, that'd be good. Stop raining, it's raining here earlier. That's got a tea. That's good. Got ginger nut today, that's my question. Questions about ginger nuts as well. So uh, we'll get that sorted out in a minute. Just see what else is going to come on. People coming on and going off, that's nice. Uh, I hope everything's, uh, I hope we're all having a good day. We're having a good day. Thumbs up if you're having a good day. Um, I'll come up with some topics as well. If anybody's got any topics they want to hear me talk about, then um, well, I think it'd be a good day, somebody. Um, just type in, if there's something that you'd like me to hear me uh, talk about, just for 10 minutes, just type it in the uh, comments box. It's always good. Uh, we sometimes, uh, and this is number 26, so I've done 26 tier threes. So quite a few. If there's anything that you'd like. <laughs> hey, good. Connie's having a good day. That's good. Right, yeah, sort the tea out. Um, my question, I'll start with my question. Um, my question today is ginger nut related, because that's the biscuit. That's my biscuit of choice today. So my question today is McVitie's ginger nuts. How many per hour do McVitie's produce? How many ginger nuts per hour do McVitie's produce? So, how many per hour? So just type it in, hope Matt Croft's on, and that'll give us a benchmark for an incorrect answer. Um, but how many, uh, how many McVitie's ginger nuts are produced every hour? So, uh, let's have some numbers in there. Wowzers, you've taken over the Crofty mantle there, Carly. <laughs> Uh, you can have another guess. That's quite high, to be fair. Um, now, I'll dunk a ginger nut. I don't know if anybody else dunks a ginger nut, but I'm, I'm just going to dunk one. Uh, it's nice. Who else is on? I'll give me a ginger nut guess, guys. How many British ginger nuts are produced an hour? And as a little tip, it's under four million. Right, okay. <laughs> I'll get there. So give me your guesses. Um, so ginger nuts, I'll push that question out again as we're going. Um, and then so the answers, I've got 6,004 million at the moment. It's, it's a strong question today, clearly. Uh, so, um, yeah, motivation today. So we'll talk about motivation. That's what we're going to do. But um, 10,000. Uh, just before we start, though, I've just noticed that I've got, I've got like a little hair on my camera. So I'm just going to move that. There we go. A little hair. Uh, that's as funny as I can be, by the way. Um, and I know that's Peter Rabbit, but I couldn't get a cuddly hair. A uh, 400,000, Carly Cole. Which, Carly Cole's just trying to get it out. Love it. Um, right, good. Motivation. So, motivation question is how many ginger nuts do McVitie's produce? Only McVitie's. So, we're talking about motivation. So, I'm talking about a uh, dad joke. It was a dad joke, but I, but I am a dad, so I'm allowed to make them. Uh, so motivation. Uh, so firstly, what is it? What? Because what, it seems a bit of the alchemy of, of certainly management. I think um, it's always seen a little bit like that. The alchemy of management. People are always saying, "Oh, if only I can motivate my people." That kind of stuff. So firstly, it's it's about desire, desire to achieve, desire to succeed, desire to take something out on it. It's kind of what makes us tick a little bit. That's what we mean by motivation. The thing is, can somebody do it to somebody else? So do I have the ability to motivate somebody? Or, or is it always coming from inside me? And that, and that kind of debate ranges a little bit. So intrinsically, I can I can drive myself, but I think other things can like inspire me. So I think I have the ability to light a fire in somebody, but then pretty much they have to fan those internal flames as well. So I think as managers, as leaders, as colleagues, we can begin to start thinking about motivating others. But... There's a host of theories out there. So there's loads of theories. Some you'll know, some you won't, maybe. Um, but I'll talk about a couple of really big ones and uh, big, really famous theories and whether they, whether they work. And then we'll just give some pragmatic tips for what we can do day on day to, to help other people. So a few people joining. My question today is how many um, how many ginger nuts do McVitie's make an hour? So you can just type your answer in there. But the theories I'm going to talk about, I'm obviously going to talk about uh, Maslow. Maslow, there's, there's a lot of debate about it. Is it still relevant? It still underpins quite a lot of our uh, motivational thinking. Um, and I won't say no, don't use it or anything along those lines. 
I still still think it holds true. Um, most people know it as a triangle and all those kind of things. <laughs> That's how many I eat. It's not how many is made. Um, <laughs> but um, I always talk about it as as film cast away. I love films. If you haven't seen the film Cast Away, it doesn't matter um, because it's just like Robinson Crusoe. Um, so it's just Robinson Crusoe, really. But this really will help you to remember the 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 hierarchy of needs that Maslow spoke about. So right down the, the, there at the bottom, just like in Cast Away, what Chuck needed was he needed to survive. That's our base level of motivation in the eyes of Maslow. One layer up, he needs to like eat and drink, um, those kind of things. But then he needs somewhere to live. He needs a bit of safety. So a little bit of safety. One layer up from that, of course, Robinson Crusoe walked around the island and found Man Friday. Chuck walked around the island and found nobody. So what he did was he, he drew a little face on the ball. Wilson, everybody knows Wilson. And that's his social needs met. The fourth layer, 265, um, um, the, the next level is about self-esteem. When, when what he did was um, he, he lit a fire, he caught a fish. So he, he felt worth. And then finally, a bit of self-actualization, which was for him was getting off the island. Once he gets back on uh, back home, then he's gonna then he's gonna start again. But those kind of layers exist. So if you think we all need, I, I need to be paid, I need to survive. How much I need varies. And bizarrely, in this situation, people have found, oh, you know, actually certain things that they're materialistic and they don't need them quite so much. We need a level of safety, and we do need a level of safety uh, around maybe where we live, about how we work, all that kind of stuff. That friendship, and and that's why things like this are important where people can log on and see familiar faces and names and Zoom meetings and teams and all of those things. So we need that personal interaction. Self-esteem is about worth. It's about, am I, am, I, am I feeling valued at work? Am I contributing and doing something of worth? And that's a, that's a really important thing in about what you do for a living, about love what you do, which I've spoken about before on these. And finally, that ultimate goal, what do I want to do, what do I want to achieve? That's Maslow. That's one theory. Now, the other guy who's, who everybody really knows and talks about is Hertzberg. But what he suggested was there was a couple of things. There were some things that motivate and some things that only have the ability to satisfy or demotivate. And in this satisfier bucket, he included things like money, um, where you work. Oh, really, some people will kind of talk about maybe the bottom three layers of Maslow. So safety and security and, and a little bit of social as well. That's, that's where Hertzberg says, those things just satisfy me. So if I feel like I'm being paid what I'm worth, it doesn't motivate me. If I'm paid more than what I think I'm worth, it doesn't motivate me. If I'm paid under what I feel I'm worth, I'm demotivated. So it's a bucket of satisfiers. So if you keep putting money in it, all you're doing is overflowing the bucket of satisfiers. Um, now, on the other side, the things that motivate, that was more like recognition. That was about development. That was about that self-esteem side, relationships. Those two theories are fine, and they still exist, and I think they're still valuable to talk about. The new thinkers, one is a guy called Dan Pink, who's written a book called Drive, where he talks about three things. He talks about purpose. We must have purpose in our role. He talks about mastery, where we have an innate desire to get better at what we do. And he also talks about autonomy, the freedom to work, how we want to work. And again, the, the lockdown and COVID has given people a lot of opportunity to work differently and create their own work uh, practices and things along those lines. A guy called Patrick Lencioni also wrote a book at the, about the same time called Three Signs of a Miserable Job, where he suggested that three things made a miserable job. One was, I don't know what I'm doing, which for me links very closely to purpose. The second thing was, I don't know what good looks like in my job, which sort of it links very closely to either uh, mastering. And finally, my boss doesn't understand me, or anonymity, as um, Lencioni called it. And that really is, is a little bit about autonomy. If my boss understood me, know what to do. So those two modern day thinkers, Lencioni and Pink, are very uh, or well worth hooking up, reading about. They're good guys. You can find them on YouTube, stuff like that. So there's some of the theories. Pragmatically, what can we do as leaders? Here we go. Here's, here's a few tips. Firstly, we can catch our people doing something right. That's, an, that's a simple thing. Now, through my career, you know, my bosses have had, you know, they've had, um, they've had plenty of times so where they've caught me doing something wrong. 
And and you kind of go, wow, how's that happened? I've been working really hard, but they've just seen me doing this at this moment in time. And of course, what they did, they see that this people saw me doing loads of good things, but they just say, oh, well, that, that's what we expect. That links to the thing about praise. Praise is a motivator. There's a suggestion that when to give three times as much praise as developmental feedback, whether that lands in the UK, I don't know. But praise, and if you see somebody doing something right, say, good. Oh, what, you know, as a simple example, there used to be a website um, where there'd be like a trainer's tip. Uh, so in my role, um, there'd be a tip for face-to-face trainers. And I was on that website once, and, and um, a boss at the time said, oh, what's the trainer's tip of the day? That was quite simply somebody catching me doing something right. That's the kind of thing we're asking. Um, another simple tip um, is if you want to know what motivates your people, ask them. Now, what a lot of people think they're going to say is the money, but we know money doesn't motivate because, you know, I don't know, robbing a bank's better paid, isn't it? So, so already our morals motivate us more than money. Um, so if people, we all need money, but short, short term. So if somebody gives me more money, that doesn't mean long term I'm going to do better work. Money tends to motivate down a very narrow channel. It works very well for, for, if you like, repetitive tasks. So I don't know, as an example, if somebody was laying out tables at a hotel banquet, if you said lay these hundred place settings in an hour and I'll pay you X amount, but for every minute do under the hour, if they're correct, I'll give you an extra 10 pound, it would be done really quickly. It's a repetitive task and it enables people to just focus on that and do it quickly. But a lot of our work is not like that. You can't, you can't say to somebody, oh, I'll give you another 500 pounds, be more creative. That, that won't work. You have to give them the freedom to be creative and allow them to fail. But ask people, and you know, question yourself, how many times have you been asked in your career, how many times, what motivates you outside of interviews or performance reviews? And this question should constantly be asked. Um, talk to people, regular one-to-ones. Um, so again, I say for, for new leaders, if people ask me one tip, what would I do? I'd say book in one-to-ones. Uh, that's, that's really important. We want FaceTime, particularly now, we want FaceTime with our boss. We want regular contact with our bosses. Uh, praise, if you see somebody doing something good, I've mentioned that. We want to develop our people. So it gives them the opportunity to be the best they can be. A lot of us have hobbies where we, we want to develop and do different things. And we choose to get better at it. Often we pay to do our hobbies. So development is key. And the last thing is trust, whether it's trust to fail, trust to succeed, but trust your people. I can't give you one thing that's going to enable you to to show trust. So you have to keep and repeat doing the right things, like saying good morning, like giving opportunity, like giving them small development tasks. And they're the kind of things that can help motivate. Those half a dozen little things can just set the things going. What we want is we want to find out what's inside, intrinsically what motivates people, rather than just saying, if you do X, I will give you Y. What we want to find out is what will make them do X better. And the best way we can do that is by asking them. So motivation, take time, talk to your people, understand them, and work with them to be the best they can be. Right. Now, on Thursday, what we're going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about influencing. The little session on managing upwards a few weeks back, so we'll just talk about influencing in a more generic um, framework. We're just going to talk about influencing people. That's what we're going to tackle. How many ginger nuts are produced in an hour? I've got to say, Kersieri, very good. You had 265,000. The answer is 285,600. So just a mere 20,600 out. So that's pretty good. So well done, Kirsty. And I hope to see everybody on Thursday for a little bit of influencing. Thanks very much for joining me today. Enjoy your tea.